If you want to put a clip in motion, you think about using the motion effect. But there are several other motion type effects that you can use to put clips in motion that you can use to layer or composite clips. And I want to show you those motion style effects. Let's go to Working Files, go to Projects, and scroll on down to 1203 Motion Effects. I'm going to show you several different ways to use a variety of motion type effects here. So let's just take a look at our clips here by clicking the icon view. I want to go take a look at these three clips here, these time lapse clips. I want one for the background, then we'll put two on top. So we'll have this one be the background number four there. I'll drag that down to the new item icon to make a new sequence. There's a new sequence there. I'll click the backslash key to kind of open things up and I'll pull this down because we don't need to worry about audio here. There you go. Let me go back. So I've got four on there. I want to put five and three on top. So I'll start by putting three on top here like that. And we'll put number five on top of number three. So I want to make the ones below visible. So I'm going to take this one, have it disappear first. You know that three is that one, and four is that one, and five is that one. I'm turning the visibility of the tracks off here to show you those. So we're going to go back to normal. I want to apply some kind of motion style effects to this clip to make the other clips below it visible. Let's go over to Effects, click on Effects, and start looking for those kinds of motion style effects. If I go through here, there are a bunch of ones that have nothing to do with motion, but the first one that has something to do with motion is Distort. And inside Distort is Corner Pin. Now, I've talked about Corner Pin before, but now we're talking about Corner Pin in terms of compositing. So I click Corner Pin on this one, make it there, make the effect controls visible, and there's Corner Pin. I click on it, and there are those corner pins. And I can bring the corner pins in and give some perspective to this clip. Pull it over like that, something like that, to kind of open it up. And I can also animate this. So I'm going to bring my current time indicator in a couple of seconds, maybe about a second or two like that. Now I'm going to turn on keyframes for the upper right and the lower right. Upper right, lower right. I'm going to go back to the beginning now and reset this. And so that'll actually allow it to animate open now so that the first keyframes are normal and the second keyframes open up like that. So that's kind of a cool thing to do, right? We can have the second one open up as well. So it's revealing the second layer here. So as it reveals that one, that can kind of settle in for a second. We can click on this one. Let's say we want to bring it in too. So we pull it over like that. Take corner pin and double click to apply it to this one. We want to have it be pulled over too. So I'm going to click on the corner pin to show its control points. These control points are for this layer, not for this one. Click it like that and pull it over like that similarly. There we go. Now that I've made this, I'm going to keyframe the upper left, lower left, upper left, lower left. Now I'm going to go back a couple seconds here to where that other one just finished doing its little opening. Right about there. And I'm going to reset this one so it'll put keyframes there it's in neutral. So now we play this guy. It's going to go like this. That one opens up. And then that one opens up. And if I want to finish it off, I can pull these guys over farther. I can take it in farther and then pull these guys, this one to the right, this one to the left, to finish this process. These dotted lines, by the way, look like they're referring to this one, but that just shows you the trail that this clip took. That's the motion path that this clip took. This guy, not this guy. That's what that guy means. If I click away, then those little paths go away. Click on this one. I click on its corner pen. You can see the path that it took when it closed down. This guy, that's its path. Okay, click away there. So that's corner pin. We just take that off there, delete that one from that clip, and delete that one from that clip. Let's go on down a little bit farther here through distort, and there's something here called transform, which we're going to use later. So why would transform be in the distort group when you've got a transform group? I've never been clear about that one, but we'll take transform on later. Let's move on down a little bit farther. We'll look at perspective. Perspective is a thing called Basic 3D, which we've seen before, but I want to show it to you in the context of having this compositing. Take Basic 3D and add it. What I like about Basic 3D is that you can swivel it like that, which is kind of cool. But it does swivel here on the center point as opposed to over here in the edge, which would be even cooler. So what I want to do is I want to have it swivel in a bit. So I'm going to go over here to maybe two seconds. We'll swivel it like so, get it all set up like that. And then I'm going to go up to Motion. And I want to change the position of it. So I click on motion so that it ends up that it's I'll swivel over to the edge here so it doesn't sort of pull in. So let me click on swivel some more here. How much farther I want to go here? Maybe about there. And I see that it's cutting off the top and the bottom, so maybe I don't want it to be quite so large. So I'm going to scale it down a bit. I can do that, but then it's still trimmed off on the top. So let's not do that. Let's use the basic 3D version of that by distance to the image. 
There you go. Now we're talking. So you can see the whole image now, which is kind of nice. But the issue is now that we swiveled it, it has this big gap here. So we need to use motion to take care of that. So I'm going to click on motion there, make it active, and drag it over like so. And that'll be how we end up. So I need to set keyframes for the final position there. And I set keyframes already for the final swivel, have I? No, I have not. So we need keyframes for it. Now I go back to the beginning, and I reset both of those guys so they'll work together. So we'll have keyframes set for everything. So let's see how that works now. There you go. It kept it from hovering out in the middle like that. So that's basic 3D. It allows you to swivel things. You can also tilt them. I'm not really into tilting this one in particular. But basic 3D does have this thing called the specular highlight. The specular highlight shows up if you tilt it this direction over here. There you go. So we kind of went the wrong way for the specular highlight in this particular case. But you can shimmer that on there. You can't control how bright the highlight is, unfortunately. So it tends to be really bright. So when you pick a highlight, you probably want to tilt it a little bit so it's not quite so powerful as it goes by. Okay, that's basic 3D. If you go in a little bit farther here, past perspective, you go to transform, where you expect to find transform, right? But you don't, but you do find camera view. I don't want to use camera view with a different clip here, so let's bring in a couple of new clips. Bring in this document here. So I'm going to drag the document over to the right, get some room for it. Pull that in right there as a document. Take a look at the document, you're going to see that it's much bigger than the frame here, much bigger than HD. It is 3896 by 2744, a very large document, much bigger than HD. So that portion of the HD frame is what you see, you don't see the entire document. So I'm going to click on this and go to Effect Controls and click on Motion. I want to zoom in on a part and then crop it. I want to crop this little part right there. I can zoom in on it a little bit by taking the handle here and kind of zooming in like so. There you go. I want to crop that. Okay, if I put the crop effect on, I go over here to Effects, and go to Crop, drag it over there. There's Crop, and Crop has this little control thing. So I click on that, and this image is so large you can't see the edge of the image. So I'm going to go over here to 10%. There are the edges, so I can crop some of it. I'll bring the crop up like that, bring the crop over like this. But I can't even get the right side over here. It's so big. So I'll go back to Fit here while we're at it. I want to crop to there. So I'm going to bring in the right on the top. So I'm going to open up the top here like that. Slide it like this. It's a little easier to control the slider than it is to control the numbers. There we come, like so. Now I want to bring in the right-hand side as well. So I slide it over. There we go, something like that. But the thing is, it's crooked. So how do we fix that? Well, we go to motion, right? That would be the first thought. We go to motion, use rotate. But watch what happens. Motion is the last effect that's applied. So we applied crop first, but now we're going to rotate. So we're going to rotate the entire clip, not the area inside the crop. So if I rotate it to the left, as you'd expect, negative number, it rotates it like that. And it does not rotate within the cropped area. This rotates the entire clip. Not what we want to do. So what the heck do we do? So what we do is we apply the transform effect and use its rotation property and apply that before we apply the crop. That way we can rotate it in advance and then crop it. So let's just close this down for a second and go get the transform, which remember, folks, is back in distort. Okay, hard to track these guys down sometimes, but there's transform inside distort. I'm gonna bring it over to this clip by just double clicking on it. It shows up here, here's transform, and we can now rotate. There's a rotation option here. I'm gonna rotate a little bit left, a little counterclockwise, and look at this, it does the same darn thing. So what's going wrong? Well, it's after crop here in this list, so it's gonna be applied after crop. So I need to bring it above crop to apply it before crop is applied. And now I'm going to rotate a little bit. Now you can see it's already starting to work. I'm going to hold on the controller command key to make it go in smaller increments a little easier that way. Now I think we got it pretty well lined up. There you go. I'm going to click on crop again to finish that process. I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. And now when I crop it, it's going to crop nice and straight like that, exactly the way I wanted to crop it. And so sometimes you have to use the transform effect when you want to do something like this and you want it to be applied before you apply something else as opposed to using motion, which is applied last. So now that we've done this, let's take this one more step to conclude our compositing process. Let's put this clip that we just worked on up on track two, and then go over and get the original clip and put it down below it here on track one. And I can use the motion effect now to rotate that clip on the bottom a little bit to line it up, or I could actually copy and paste the transform effect and put it up there as well, but we'll go with just moving the motion effect. Now that we've got it lined up, we can zoom way out on it, make it look really small relative to the zoomed in portion we have on track two. 
and we're going to highlight that element on track two. We could have it come out of the document or something else. But at any rate, this is how you can composite and also make sure things line up by using transform before you apply something like crop. So that's a rundown on all the various motion type effects that you can use instead of the actual motion effect when you're compositing clips.